Today we're going to talk all about playing NIM. Now, we all had the opportunity to play some NIM on Thursday, but I want to go over the rules again really quickly. We start with some number of piles of stones. Any number of piles, and each pile can have any number of stones. There's some fixed starting position. There are two players. They alternate taking stones with the following rules. A player may take stones from one and only one pile. Rule two, a player must take at least one stone and may take as many as desired up to and including the entire pile. Under normal play, the player who makes the last move, meaning leaves no stones left, wins. We will also have in one of the exercises a question about misere play for Nim, and then taking the last stone will amount to a loss. But for today's talk here, uh, we're going to be talking about normal play rules. Nim is very easy if there's only one pile. If there's only one pile and it's your turn, take everything, win the game. So normally we certainly start with more than one pile. So a common game of Nim starts with three piles, but any number of piles can be used as the starting position. Our goal here is to talk about what we can say about perfect play in Nim. And in order to answer that question, what is perfect play, we need to know what the P or N positions are. Before we can do that, we want to define an interesting mathematical operation. It's called the NIM sum. The NIM sum is a type of sum for whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., that tells you how to add them in a special way. In order to compute the NIM sum of two numbers, you first write the numbers in binary, base 2, and then in each position, you add the numbers mod 2, meaning you get a 0 if the numbers, if the sum of the numbers uh, in that position is even, and you get a 1 if the sum of the numbers in that position is odd. We then interpret the result as a base 2 number. Let me show you how that works. Let's say we want to find the NIM sum of 19 and 38. Well, 19 is the number 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And I'm going to write it out here because it's generally easier to talk about a NIM sum by writing the numbers one on top of each other, as I'll show you. If we want to take the NIM sum with the number 38, which is the number 1, 0, 0. Uh, I'm not lining them up properly, so let me uh, do that. whole point of using columns here is to line them up. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Let me be clear. This is the 1's position. Uh, yeah, the 1's position. This is the 2's. This column represent the, represents 4's. This column represent 8's. Represents 8's. This column represents 16's. And this column here represents 32's. So 19 is 1 plus, uh, sorry, 16, 1, 16 plus 2 plus 1, that's 19. These are all numbers in base 2. 38 is a 32 plus 4 plus 2. So it has the binary representation 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. The reason it's best to line them up like this, it's much harder to have it in this form, is now we can add each column mod 2. What does that mean? We look at the number of 1s here, and if it's odd, we get a 1. Here we have two ones, so we get a zero. Here we have a single one. Here we have no ones. Here we have a single one, so we get a one. And here we have a, sing a single one, so we get a one. So the NIM sum of 19 and 38 is the number with base two representation 110101. That's 32 plus 16 plus four plus one. That's 53. So we say 19 NIM sum 38 is 53. As I say, when you're doing it by hand, I would always recommend doing it this way, lining up the numbers like that. Let's run through another example real quickly. What is 15 plus 21 using the NIM sum? 15 is just 1, 1, 1, 1. That's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. 21 
uses a 16. No 8s. We need 5 more, so we have a 4, no 2s, and a 1. And remember, all of this is base 2 here. Then we add mod 2. So it's like adding without any carryover. 1 plus 1 is 2. That's a 0, mod 2. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 gives you 0. 1 plus 0 gives you 1. And the 1 gives you a 1. So the nim sum of 15 and 21 is the number whose base 2 represent representation is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And that's just 16 plus 8 plus 2, which is 26. This nim sum is a very interesting mathematical operation. If we think of the positive integers, the set 0, 1, I'm sorry, non-negative integers, we want to include 0, the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., often called the whole numbers, so I'll just write it as w. And we use this binary operation, the nim sum, this set of whole numbers with this nim sum operation actually forms a very nice group. What does that mean? Well, the number zero is the identity element here using this operation, because if you have any number n and you take the nim sum with zero, you get n, and certainly zero plus n is also n. Each number n is its own inverse. That's not necessary for being a group, but that's an interesting property of this group. Why is it true that n plus n equals 0? Well, whatever the binary representation of n is, here's just an example. If you take the nim sum with itself, it'll just be the same thing below it. And when you add up by columns, you'll get zeros in every position. So regardless of what n happens to be, when you nim sum with itself, you'll get exactly zero. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to mention the nim sum is both commutative and associative. So we need associativity in order to have a group, and it will actually be a commutative operation, so we'll have an abelian group. Why is the nim sum commutative and associative? What does that mean? It means A plus B is the same as b plus a, using the nim sum. That's true for any a and b in w. I claim that's pretty much obvious based on how we define the nim sum. When you write them one on top of each other, it doesn't matter which is above, which is below. The way you add up the columns only depends on the column totals. Also, we need to know that a plus b plus C is the same as A plus B plus C, with the parentheses in the other order. And I'd like you guys to kind of check to see that this is true. An easy way to kind of convince yourself it's true is ask what you get as a result in either way. And if you can get the same thing with parentheses here or parentheses here, then of course the two are equal. A way to describe what you get at the end is just to line the three numbers up in columns, and we'll see an example of this very shortly. And when you add the column mod 2, it doesn't make any difference whether you add first the top two numbers and then the third one, or the first add the bottom two numbers and then add the first one. All you care about is their sum mod 2.